Now let's examine another situation in which we can simplify the problem and pass it to a general, from a general 3D problem to a just 2D problem. It's the case which is called plane strain. So the starting point of plane strain are same hypotheses. First, look, the component Z, so we know that components X and Y are the components of the plane of analysis, so the board, the blackboard uh, plane. So the component of displacement out of the blackboard, UZ, is equal to zero. So we assume, or we just impose that if that UZ is equal to zero, then together with another hypothesis, which is that the other two displacements do not depend on the component, on the coordinate Z. So they depend on X and Y, and eventually, if the problem is time dependent, they depend on T. So look, they are different hypotheses. On plane stress, we assumed we made hypotheses on the stresses, and from that we obtain what happened with the strains and the displacements. Here, we do hypotheses on the, the displacements, and let's see what happens with that. So if the displacements are like that, by the way, when, what, in what type of structures we can assume that situation with a reasonable degree of accuracy? Typically, dams, for instance, in gravity dams or arch dams with a small uh, curvature angle. Imagine an, an, a gravity dam like that. Right? So that's the cross-section of the gravity dam. And the geometry of the gravity dam can be represented by translating this cross section, this generative section, along the third direction, along the z direction. So this is x and y, and z direction is that, right? Look also the typical actions, the typical actions on this cross section. They are the self weight, for instance which is contained in the, in the plane of the analysis. There are the tractions. For instance, the, imagine that there is a road on the, on the, on the, on the, at the top of the crest of the, of the dam. Then we can consider some forces on the top, like that. And of course, we just, when we gen make the generation of the dam by this cross-section moving along that direction, we also consider, for instance, the actions which are generated in that way. What is the most typical action that we have in a dam? Typically, the water pressure. The water pressure, which is something that we just come into, into that issue in the future, but it can be represented by a triangular distribution of pressures on the upstream surface of the dam, which also is constant in the direction Z. So, Typically, it's a situation in which we have that the geometry is constant, the cross-section is constant across the z direction, and the loads are also constant across the z direction. The, the loads are also contained on the plane xy, like typical the loads here and also the pressure. Okay. So now, in this situation, let's consider that center of the dam, this plane here. Since it's a symmetry plane, because everything by construction, as we have seen that, it's a symmetry plane, then what can we say about UZ? UZ, which is the displacement in that direction, have the same reasons to take this sense or that sense. So that could be zero. In this cross-section, is equal U Z equals zero. And also, if we assume that the displacements are continuous, the derivative of u, u x and u i with respect to z have the same have to have the same value when we go this way or when we have this way. So being continuous that means that they have to be equal to zero. So that what does it mean? That u z is equal to zero, and u x and u i do not depend on z. That's what we assume here. U z is equal to zero, and u x and u i do not depend on z. So, for instance, if we want to analyze a gravity dam or a 
but we'll see some other examples now, a gravity dam and represent them by the central cross-section and admitting that other cross-sections are in very similar situations, then these central cross-sections can be analyzed as a plane strain. Instead of it using here doing a 3D analysis, we can just do a plane strain, a 2D analysis of this cross-section under the hypothesis of plane strain. Well, what happens there? Well, if the hypotheses are those and we compute the strain field, we see that these components of the strains are zero by construction because u z is zero or because the derivative of u x with respect to z or the derivative of u y with respect to z are zero. And also, of course, epsilon x, epsilon y and gamma x y, which are different from zero, are also function of x and y because u x, u y and u are functions of x and y and t. And so the strain field, look, the strain tensor look like that. All these components, e z, gamma uh, x z, gamma y z, are zero. So in other words, the strains, non-zero strains, are contained in the plane of the analysis. The out-of-plane axial strain and the out-of-plane angular strains are zero. Okay? So that is where the name plane strain situation comes from. So look, comparing with the plane stress, in the plane stress, which is zero, what is zero, is the situation here, is, uh, sorry, uh, what is it? Here, right? What in plane stress, the non-zero stresses are the ones contained in the plane of analysis. The remaining are zero. But, but the, there is another out-of-plane strain different from zero. In plane strain instead, the non-zero strains are those in the, contained in the plane of analysis. Okay? Well, what happens with the stresses? Well, if we replace the situation in the Hooke's law, lambda traps epsilon times one plus blah blah blah. We see again that all uh, shear x z and y z stresses are zero. Tau x y is not zero because gamma x y is not zero, and then we see that the uh, stresses, the normal stresses, and the normal strains are related by these equations. Look, that they constitute a set of three equations where. Uh, only there appear x, x, uh, epsilon x and epsilon y. Epsilon z doesn't appear because epsilon z is zero. So that allows eliminating the stresses here and obtain one equation relating a sigma uh, z, so eliminate epsilon x and epsilon y, and obtain an, one equation relating only a stresses. What is this equation, this one? This one that says that sigma z, the out of plane stress, is not zero, but is known in terms of sigma x and sigma y, in terms of sigma x plus sigma y multiplied by mu. So it's like a counterpart of the plane strain where the, of the plane stress cases where the, the stresses were zero, the out, uh, out of plane stresses were zero, but there was a component of the strain in the direction of z. Here is the, 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 the counterpart. The strains are contained in the plane of the analysis, but there is one principal stress in the direction z, which, however, is known in, in, fine, in terms of sigma x and sigma y. So now by replacing these conditions in the uh, Hooke's law, by replacing these conditions, finally, we can obtain a relation with sigma x, sigma y, and tau x y, which constitute the stress vector in uh, notation of void, related to the vector of signif significant strains, epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma x y, which is given by this 3 times 3 matrix, which, by the way, is different from the one that we had in plane stress. So we have a matrix for plane strain and a different matrix for plane stress, relating the three in plane stresses and the three in plane strains. 
Okay? So finally, in summary, we have not two non-zero uh, displacements, displacement zeta is equal to zero, three non-zero strains, epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy, and three relevant stresses, although there is another one, which is sigma z, which is not relevant in the sense that it's not an unknown because it can be written in terms of the sigma x and sigma y. That is the situation. Okay? Examples of that. The one that I've said is the dam, but also, for instance, this pipe. One pipe, when we want to design pipes, when the action is typically the internal pressure. Pipes to, 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 to drive water or whatever. So, I mean, if we consider that the, that the pipe is very long, so every section, not just at the ends, can be considered a symmetry section, then, by the same reasons that we said before, we can make here the assumptions that the displacement z is equal to zero, and the, the, the derivative of the, or, or the displacements can change in the plane of analysis, but they do not change when we move in that direction. This continuous break shoe, you know, you know what does it mean that the Zapata Corrida we said, okay? In which we consider long shoe for construction, which is supported on the, on the soil, and then the actions are repeated across the length, along the length of the, of the, of the shoe, of the brake shoe. Tunnels, for instance. Tunnels is also the same. If we can consider that the tunnel is very long, and then the actions on the tunnel are also always contained in the cross section, which is normal like that, so tunnels are normally studied in plane strain. Once we know we study the plane strain section, we know that all sections have the same stress and the strain situation. Also, short, short structures, like, for instance, we have this pipe, which is in short, it's not length, long, but we can consider that if, by some reason, the ends of the show are blocked, are considered clamped, then the displacement z is zero by construction here, is zero by construction here, and if the length is not very, if very high, so we consider that u z equals zero is a situation that can be extended to all the length of this pipe. So there is a number of situations. I can mention some others. For instance, the cross section of a road or the railway, the platform, the platform of the railway, which is one section that repeats along the other direction and where the actions are typically uh, contained in the, in the cross section, then it can be studied both for roads and also for railways. The platforms can be studied in terms elastically or inelastically by using the plane strain uh, situations, uh, hypothesis.